Hi, this is Kay of CleverSomeday.com, and welcome to my series on how to engrave aluminum bracelets with your Cricut Maker. If you've already tried to engrave bracelets or other small items, you know that it can be really hard to get the engraving aligned on the item where you want it. So tackling that problem is going to be the topic for part one of this series. The usual methods involve guesswork and eyeballing and are inherently inaccurate as they can't take matte loading differences into account. They work okay for larger, regular shape blanks or with forgiving designs, but on smaller or irregular shapes or where you want things perfectly centered, we need a better solution. As I realized a couple years ago when working on my flat embossing technique, there is a better solution using technology that already comes built into your Cricut for print than cut. So what we are going to do is first print then cut a jig or fixture to position our blank and then we are going to use a corresponding template project to line up our engraving to match. This way the maker will use the sensor marks for positioning the engraving with a high degree of accuracy. So it's a little work up front but this is a one time process and I think you will see that it makes a big difference down the road. These 5 8 inch bracelet blanks from Impress Art are very popular for engraving, easy to find, and a great way to start. If you aren't familiar, they come flat with a bending bar. So you do the engraving while they are flat, then bend them into the bracelet shape. I've already created the bracelet jig project in Design Space for you. So click on the link or enter it into your browser and you will be redirected to the desktop or mobile app to open it. By the way, all the links I mentioned will be listed in this video's description for you and also on my Clever Sunday blog. Feel free to choose Save, then save as to add the jig to your projects, but I'd appreciate it if you uncheck public and send people to my original instead. The jig is all ready to go, so click make it and follow the prompts to print on white matte finished cardstock. Whatever cardstock you have on hand is fine, as long as it can run through your printer. The heavier the better though for holding the blank and for durability since it's reusable. If you turn on Use System Dialog, then you will see your normal printer setting choices instead of it just printing automatically with the default settings. So it's a good idea to use the system dialog if your printer has any options for thick paper which you would select. And then go ahead and press Print. Place the printout on your mat and continue with the prompts. Choose your material setting based on the cardstock you are using so heavy cardstock or medium cardstock for example. I have a custom setting for my Recollections 110 pound cardstock favorited so I'm choosing that. Load any color pin into the accessory clamp. Load the fine point blade into the blade clamp. Load the mat and press the go button. After the maker detects the sensor mark, it will draw a rectangle and then cut out the bracelet slot. That's all there is to making the jig. It's basically a make it now project and you only have to do this once for each shape. It's fine to take the jig off the mat if you aren't going to use it right away. Now the jig is only useful with projects designed for it. So before I teach you how to use your own designs with it, I want you to try a sample file so you can understand how it works and get some early success. Just like we did with the jig project, we're going to open the link to the Breathe Bracelet project, which has been designed specifically to work with our jig. It is also ready to go, so we click Make It. When we get to the preview screen, you will see it says Print, Engrave, Cut. We are only going to engrave, but that's still what it needs to be showing when you use this method. You should also see the sensor mark in the preview, along with the breathe design centered on the bracelet shape. Now let's go back and load up the physical mat. Put the jig on the mat as you normally would position an item for print and cut, lined up with the upper left corner. Remove the cutout if you haven't already. Remove the protective plastic from both sides of the blank 
and put high-tack double-sided tape on the back side. If you have a new or very sticky mat, you might not even need the double-sided tape. Peel the backing off the tape and place the blank in the opening face up. You want to be sure it is all in and flat against the mat. Remember that rectangle drawn with the pen when we made the jig? Well, one of its purposes is to show us the safe zone. You don't want any tape or marks outside of it or within about 5 8 inch of the outside of the mark, or you risk confusing the sensor. Another purpose for the jig is to protect your mat from the engraving dust. So it's a good idea to stick a piece of tape over the thumb slot too. Back at the computer we click continue, then click I've already printed. and choose Foil Holographic Craft Board as the material. The reason we don't have all the engraving material choices is because the software thinks we're going to cut. This is a trade-off that shouldn't affect our results. In my testing, the Foil Holographic Craft setting works quite well. Get your quick swap housing, put the tip labeled 41 on it, and lock that into the B-clamp. Together this constitutes the engraving tool and it's the only thing that will pass the tool check. The A-clamp can be empty. You'll see on this screen that it also says we will be needing a fine point blade, but we actually will not be using it. Time to load the mat into the machine. Make sure your star wheels are outside of your blank. I use a cheap wooden ruler or clean paint stirrer in the slot to keep the mat from flexing. Press the load button. Press the Go button and watch as it reads the sensor marks. It will also do a mat check before and after the sensing so it can be sure everything is clearing the bar. When this is all done, it will check for the engraving tool, then start engraving in the proper location on your blank. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to verify that since we don't know where it's going to start and because the front bar blocks our view. If you suspect any issue, simply press the pause button. After a pause, removing the tool will give you a better look and better access if you need to remove shavings before the engraving is complete. I should warn you that engraving with the Cricut takes a long time. This design, which already includes several passes, will take you a good couple of hours. When it finishes one pass of engraving, it will stop where engraving ended and prompt you to install the fine point blade. Instead, take the engraving tool out, leaving both clamps empty, and press go. The maker will air cut the perimeter and then stop at the top of the mat so you can inspect your engraving in the open. This design actually has multiple layers built in, so you probably won't need more passes. But if you do want more passes, click Go, reinstall the engraving tool, and click Go again to repeat the process. When you're satisfied with the engraving, click the Unload button. This process is so accurate that you actually can uninstall and reinstall the mat between passes as long as your jig and blank have not been removed from the mat, but it's better to do it all in one mat load if you can. Remove the loose shavings with tape before removing the blank from the mat to help keep the shavings off the sticky part of your mat. If you aren't planning to engrave additional bracelets soon, remove the jig and any tape residue from the mat and store the jig in a safe place to reuse later. I'm not going to cover how to polish, bend, and finish the bracelet because that's better left to experts whose resources I'll link for you in this video's description. In a future video, I will show you how to use your own designs with this jig, but in the meantime, you can find my written instructions also linked below. I host a Facebook group for Cricut Engravers, which is a great place to see examples and get help, so I hope you'll join me there as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, you can say thanks by liking, sharing, and commenting. Also, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be notified when more videos in this series come out. Thanks for watching, and happy engraving!